down. We've been talking about faith. We've been in Hebrews 11, and we're going to stay there for a few more weeks. And we've been talking about faith, that faith is an action verb, and um, that um, God calls us to action, and that's how we demonstrate our faith is by how we live our lives. So we've learned about several different verbs. We learned all about sacrifice from Abel. Um, we learned that our daily walk is important. We learned that from the story of Enoch. Uh, we learned about obedience when we talked about Noah and Abraham. Last week, we studied the patriarchs and learned about blessings, that faith blesses us and causes us to bless others. And tonight, we're going to talk about how faith is fearless. So that's why we're going to talk about fear and fearlessness. Um, we're going to do that through the life of Moses. So um, we'll, um, I'll tell you first of all, my young impression of Moses. I thought Moses was a wimp. And this is why I thought Moses was kind of wimpy. Because in Exodus 2.14, he, it sounds to me like he was afraid after he murdered that Egyptian because he's getting out of town. <laughs> and so I just thought, well, that isn't a very brave man. I mean, here he's part of Pharaoh's house. He can get away with anything he wants. He's got special privileges. So I didn't think very highly of, of Moses. Then in the next chapter, in Exodus 3, he's talking to God through the burning bush. And... Um, he didn't want to go back and save Israel. And here was something that God himself was speaking to him and, and telling him to do. And I'm thinking, what's wrong with you? And then I thought about myself. And when God talks to me, I kind of respond the same way sometimes. No, you're kidding, God. You really don't mean it. So then if we go to the next chapter in Exodus, Exodus 4, Moses is still talking to God, but now he's coming up with excuses, all kinds of excuses why not to do the things that God had, had wanted him to do. So that was my young impression of Moses. And I just didn't understand why he was considered such a great man. So now that you know what I thought when I was young, let's turn to our passage tonight. It's page 1110. In, um, in the Bibles, and, and we're going to start with verse 23. We're going to read 23 through 28. Hebrews? Hebrews 11, page 1110. I think we're on, t maybe we're on page 11, 11 by now. 11, it is 1110, okay. So verse 23. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents, because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. At this point, Pharaoh had demanded that all um, Israelite boys that were born had to be killed, and these parents didn't care. Verse 24, by faith Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. If you remember the story, he was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter and grew up in Pharaoh's house. But it says here that, he refused to be called her son. Instead, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward, meaning eternity. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. And by faith he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. So there's a lot to digest here with Moses, and so we're going to take each one separately. First of all, Moses came from a family of faith. Do not ever underestimate the impact that you have on other people, especially your children. Moses probably lived with his parents only until he was three. What I find interesting is that science says that our personalities are molded within the first three years of our life. Our morals are instilled in us, and our basic personality is determined 
that quickly. Science also says that we don't remember anything before we're three years old. And I know people that do remember, you know, some incidents and things. So it's interesting that if science is right, that God would have Moses raised in the house of his parents to learn about Jehovah and to learn the traditions of their race. I don't think he was there just to get the mother's milk. I mean, she was paid to nurse him, no doubt about that. The scriptures tell us that. But I don't think that that was why he was really there. And I thought about it when I read this this week. Pharaoh's daughter paid his mother to nurse him. They were slaves. They didn't have any money. This was really an anomaly that they would be paid anything for anything. So um, I think Mo Moses' family background is extremely important. Um, for those of you who were here for the 2 o'clock study, we know that the rest of his family starts to get involved with his ministry and things. So his family is, is core to who Moses is. Verse 24 says that Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now think about that. He grew up in a privileged home. Pharaoh, the pharaohs thought they were gods. And so they had whatever they wanted because they could just take it because everybody was scared of them because they were supposedly gods. Pharaoh's sister, Moses' um, adoptive mother, um, I'm sure she spoiled him rotten. She couldn't have children. This was as close as she was going to get. And she had all the wealth of Pharaoh at her disposal as well. And so I'm sure that Moses was, um, you know, coddled a little bit. But he probably didn't look like the other Egyptians in the palace. You know, he was a Jewish boy. And so his skin tone was probably a little different. And he'd spent those first three years with his family. So, you know, I think he felt a little out of place. And he knew something was different. Moses, I'm sure, was circumcised on the 10th day. His parents were extremely um, devoted to God. And so I'm sure that they had him circumcised. The Egyptians didn't circumcise. The only people that were circumcised in the Egyptian culture were the priests. And so I think Moses stood out for, for many reasons. And um, we had a... Um, cousin whose child, he was born prematurely and so they couldn't circumcise him. It was dangerous because he was so little. And by the time he was in school and getting to be in that 8 to 10 age group, it was torture for him. The kids would pick on him and everything else. And you wouldn't think that that would happen. But kids can be mean. And, you know, boys all go to the bathroom together. And, and so they had to, you know, to take care of that. And I think Moses was on the opposite side of that. I think that, um, you know, that people knew that he was different. And he probably got picked on and bullied a little bit. Even though he had everything that he could want, he chose God. Um, Again, those first three years of his life. Verse 26 tells us that Moses loved God more than Pharaoh. We know that he had every opportunity to sin that, that would have been out there. Because we know how pagan the Egyptians were. And that was all at his disposal. He, had, um, he could own anything that he wanted to own. He was this adopted son of a of Pharaoh's sister who couldn't have any children, and she would do whatever she could for him. He chose eternity. He kept his eyes on heaven and what he would have forever versus what was at his disposal at the moment. I don't know how he overcame all of those temptations, but he did. Verse 27 also shows us that, um, go ahead. It, as you're saying that, one of the things that occurred to me is how easy 
to, to love Jehovah more than to love Pharaoh. Pharaoh's there supplying all of his needs in the physical realm. Pharaoh is almost, the Egyptians worshiped him as a god. Right, and he thought he was God. So he thought he was God. And Moses chose to love God more than Pharaoh, which would have put him in hiding. He had to hide. I would think he would have had to hide that belief. You know, that's really a good point. I'm sure he couldn't worship God openly in the palace. Um, I'm sure that many of the slaves in the palace were also Israelites, and so um, he maybe hung out with them more than he hung out with. How angry would Pharaoh have been if he'd heard Moses say about God more than you? And, and I'm not sure that, that Pharaoh didn't know that. We don't know what circumstances he grew up with in that household. So, um, and that's kind of what I want. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was a different life than I think we, we think of. Um, Moses also was the kind of person to take action. Um, verse 27 says that he left Egypt, and when he left Egypt, he became a sheep farmer. He left all that wealth and everything behind him, and he ended up spending the next 40 years in no man's land doing um, manual labor. I wonder, though, if Moses spent some of his adult life as a slave. And the reason I say that is in verse 25, it says, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. It almost makes me wonder if he didn't give up the palace before he left town and spent time with his people. And there's, a, there's a direct parallel with Jesus. He said, forsaking the shame of the cross. Right. Vers Moses fors he, he said, I could be Pharaoh Jr. I could grow up to be Pharaoh Jr. But there's this tub another way, and he couldn't deny it. And Moses is, you know, there's a lot of things in Moses' life that are parallels to Jesus Christ. And, um, and I think we're just seeing, you know, some of them at this point. Um, when Moses left, whether he left Moses' house earlier than when he fled Egypt or not, what's really clear from the scriptures is that Moses acted on his love for God. His love for God, the invisible God, to me that's fearless. To stand up to the, one of the mightiest people on the planet, the, a man who had everything that he wanted. He might have loved him. And he may have loved him. We know that you know, his sister sure did. So that is why I feel that Moses was fearless. Another example of um, Moses' faith is the Passover. Moses had just walked through nine plagues with Egypt. Now, most of the plagues did not hit the children of Israel. They lived um, in Goshen. When Joseph brought his family, he asked the Pharaoh if his family could live in Goshen. So they were a little separated from Egypt. And so they were not impacted by all nine of those plagues. And I think that's important because Moses is coming with this 10th plague and it's going to hit everybody, both Egyptian and Israelite. And the details for all the plagues are in um, chapters 7 through 10 if you want to read that some other time. But think about what Moses was asking people. He came up to them and he said, you need to pack what you're going to take with you. <laughs> You need to have this special meal, and he spelled out what they were going to eat. Oh, yeah, and I want you to take the blood from the animal that you're going to kill and paint it on your doorpost, like that was a common occurrence. <laughs> and then they had to eat standing up with their shoes on. And I think it really took an act of faith for all of them to, um, to be able to follow through on what Moses was explaining to them. And I don't believe every Israelite believed him. Um, it sure would be nice if everybody followed him and, and did what he had, had asked. 
there had to be a couple of doubters in the crowd. I mean, there's a couple million people. There had to be a doubter or two. Charlie, you're not in your head. <laughs> it takes a great deal of faith to do what God wants us to do. And it takes a great deal of faith to listen to somebody else telling us how God is leading us. And that's what happened with the Passover. I'm not sure that everybody was fearless. I'm sure that they wondered what was going on all night as, as families were crying out with their, with their children dying and, and things. Um, but I think it takes even stronger faith, a fearless faith, to be able to lead people like Moses led the children of Israel. Needless to say, Moses is not a wimp in my book anymore. <laughs> I've come to recognize what an amazing man he is. And I think the things that I interpreted as kind of wimpy were really his humility. Because Numbers 12.3 tells us, now the man Moses was very meek, more than all people who were on the face of the earth. Just as Solomon was the wisest, Moses was the most humble. Go ahead, Tom. Who wrote that? <laughs> he knows the answer. He's just messing with you. <laughs> who wrote that? God. We believe the Bible's inspired. But who There's that there. who wrote it down? Where? Well, I wasn't there to see, though I sometimes feel that old. It was. It's believed that Moses Moses, Moses, Moses wrote the first books. Man, written by Moses. Hmm. We've always laughed at that one. Just for what it's worth. It's, you call yourself the most humble, and you're the one that wrote it. We don't know for sure. <laughs> but I believe that his humility is what drove him to those things. I don't think he was arguing with God. Um, to get out of it. I think he just... Um, I, you know, I, um, I think that, um, that Moses' humility is what drove him to those things. It wasn't that he was afraid or trying to get out of doing things for God. I think that instead it was his humility that he said, God, are you really sure that it's me? That, you know, isn't there somebody better than me? I, don't, I think that's what he was, was arguing. So if fearless is the opposite of fear, I wanna talk for just a couple minutes about what fear is. And there's basically three types of fear. The first one is to be afraid of something because it's dangerous or painful or threatening. That's that gut feeling that we get and you know, the danger feelings that we have, I think that's that's put into us for safety's sake or we none of us would be alive. We'd do really dumb things and not avoid the danger. So I think that that kind of fear is good. The second fear is anxiety, more of a worry kind of a fear. And God gives us lots of instructions on how to leave our stuff with him. Not that we listen well, but... Um, and then the third kind of fear is the fear of God. Mm. And that kind of fear, some people think that it's a trembling in your boots kind of a fear, but it's not. It's a reverence fear. It's, it's how we, we respect God, and we do that um, because, um, because of the way that we, re -love, that we love him. And that is a good fear. That's a healthy fear. And that's the kind of fear that, that God wants from us, is kind of an adoring attitude. So it, fearless is actually an adjective for fear. And I love some of the synonyms. Um, bold, brave, courageous, valiant, plucky, mm -hmm. lion-hearted, stout-hearted, heroic, daring. That's what we think of when we think of fearless. And don't we want to be this way? Don't we want to be this way as, as we walk as, as Christians? To be able to face all of those um, temptations and trials that life throws at us. We can. We don't often do it, but we can and we should. 
So I want to talk about, I've got some verses here, about what God has to say about fear. I'm going to start with Isaiah 43, 1. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. 1 John 4, 18. Pardon me? Called by name. Called by name. We are all called by name. 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. And where does perfect love come from? God himself. Moses knew before Isaiah wrote these words in Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. We don't have to be afraid. Go ahead, Charlie. Ain't that, ain't that what God told Moses when, before he let Moses go into Egypt to get his people? That he, that he would be with him? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's why I said Moses knew this before Isaiah wrote the words. I don't know, know the same word that God spoke to Moses before. And I don't know if they're verbatim. Okay. I, I haven't looked that up. Okay. Um, they could be. Um, I it's just, I don't know the answer oh, to that. Okay. Sorry. Well, then maybe you know the answer and I don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, the, the last verse that I have, and there's a lot more verses in the scripture. Sometimes when we do get afraid, we need to have God's word hidden in our heart. And this is a great verse to memorize so that when we do have that moment of panic or anxiety or whatever our fear is, um, that, that, God can bring this, these words to our minds. Psalm 56, 3, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Right. Sounds easy, but boy, it's, it's hard for us sometimes. I believe that Moses faced a lot of fear. If we read through Exodus, he faced a lot of fears. But his faith was stronger than his fear was. That's the important thing. And that faith was enough to help him overcome those fears and do the things that God asked him to do. And we can have the same thing that Moses had. We can have that kind of faith that makes us fearless. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful for the examples that you give us in scripture. And Lord, we are so very thankful that they are as human as we are, that they make the same mistakes that we make so that we can see your love we can see your power, and we can see the victory that we can have in our lives. Lord, I just pray that we would be able to implement all of these things that we're learning about faith, and that we can become stronger people for you, and that others will see that, Lord, and be drawn to you. Bless the rest of our time together now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.